Well, welcome to another RDWorks Learning Lab. Now, several months ago, I discovered that my lens was in upside down as supplied by the factory. I had a question just recently from a, a guy called uh, Tad Bozhanowski, and I hope I've pronounced his name right. My apologies if I haven't. Um, he asked why I had to turn my lens over because his wife was a radiologist and uh, she was used to using lens systems and asked the question, why would it make a difference? Well, I have to say I'm guilty of negligence because I couldn't answer the question and when I discovered that my lens was in upside down I was overjoyed when I turned it the right way up and found that it seemed to perform a lot better. Now, it was rather an embarrassing question that Ted asked me and he went off and did his own research and finished up coming back to me with this picture. And this picture clearly shows that there are two effective focal lengths, EFL. Now the front focal length, which is the FFL, is the designation of the lens itself. In other words, if it is a two inch focal length lens, that's the FFL, the front focal length, which is from the curved side facing the work. Now that's the way that my lens arrived in my machine and all the information that I was reading about um, when I was investigating this said that this is the wrong way to have your lens. The lens should be facing the other way with the flat side to the work. Now if we take a look at this picture you'll see that the EFL, the effective focal length, from the other direction is completely different. The two EFLs don't start from the same point and there's something called a back focal length which is the point where the lens focuses down from the flat side of the lens. If you look a little bit more closely at this picture you will see that the FFL is actually longer than the BFL. In other words we appear to have a shorter focal distance when the lens is facing flat side down to the work than when it's facing curved side down to the work. Just recently, in between doing my wood carving experiments, I've had to do one or two card favours for my family. And I've gone back to using card again with my new 60 watt tube. And for some reason or other, the quality of the focus point doesn't seem to be as good as it was when I had my 30 watt tube in. Now, this has been a bit of a puzzle to me. so. I've taken an opportunity to study this a little bit closer again to, to re-look at lenses and how they work and where the focal points are. So having seen from this picture that there are potentially two valid but different focal points for a plano convex lens, um, I've set up a little experiment. So what I have designed here is a little ramp that allows me to check the focus point of my particular lens and what I'm going to do is to test the lens in both of its positions curved side up and curved side down and we'll see what difference it makes. So here I'm using probably some 160 gram white card to make these little uh, to make these little aids with. Now we'll make at least two of these because we need to test the lens in both configurations. Right, we'll just now make these little items up and what I'm going to do first of all is to fold the, obviously this side here is the inside because all the letters are backwards. So we we'll just fold these sides in 
and we'll fold the ends in and then we'll fold these little tabs outwards and then we'll fold the main tabs inwards like that Okay. Now when we bring them together like this, we can find that the tabs will pass through the slots, like that. <clears throat> and that will fold up into a nice little ramp, like that. So I should just do the other one. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set my maximum power I've got it set to 12% which is not very much but 12% is about 12 watts and then we've got the we're happy with that now we'll set the speed and I've got the speed set to it's set to 93 but say 100 millimeters a second so I've manually driven the nozzle to the center of my slope and what I'm going to do is just push it underneath and raise the table so the nozzle just touches the top of the slope just like that now this first mark here is one millimeter lower than where I've got the nozzle set now because the top corner is zero this is one millimetre lower, two millimetres lower, three, four, five, six, seven millimetres lower at this end of the ramp. So as I run down the ramp, I should get a change on the focal, I should get a change on the width of the beam actually, and I should also get a change in the cutting ability of the beam. So what I'm going to do is just literally hold the pulse button, I'll just move it away a bit. So I'm now going to hold the pulse button on, which is power on, and I'm going to literally just run down that like that and there we are we've got a line down there when I hold it up to the light I can just about see daylight through part of that which is what I want to do just about see daylight I'm now going to change the lens over because at the moment that lens is by all accounts the wrong way round i.e. it is curved side downwards take a look at that you'll see what I mean that's the curved side and that's facing down to the work right, we now put it flat side to the work nothing else has changed look we can still just about get that under there and we'll run exactly the same test again. I'm going to hold the pulse button down and we're going to run down it. Like that, with a line. OK, now, now we examine the results. The top one, which was the convex side up, the focus point starts at about three and three quarters and finishes up a little bit beyond the red mark that I've put on there at something like about five and a quarter. So there is about a one and a half millimetre spread of good focus. Determined by the fact that you've got a cut that goes right the way through or virtually right the way through. Now when we compare that to the one below it, which was done with the lens the other way around, you can immediately see that the focus point has changed and it's now sitting at approximately six millimeters again I was a little bit pessimistic with one mark and optimistic with the other and now that I've got it against a nice light screen here we can see that typically the center is about six millimeters but there's only a one millimeter spread as opposed to a one and a half millimeter spread the other way now although this is the correct focal distance here six millimeters the distance over which the power is maximized is around about six millimeters plus or minus maybe half a millimeter 
Whereas on this one, the same power, in fact, if anything, I would say probably there's a little bit more power on here because we've cut through maybe just a little bit more. And it's certainly over a longer distance. So that means the shape of the beam must be different. In other words, we've got a much longer wasting with this flat side downwards, which means we've got a much wider cutting range. And I would say that we might have a little bit more focus because this, at this point here, appears to be a slightly lighter colour. In other words, we've cut through a little bit more in this area than we have with this one. There could be a little bit better spot quality with the lens with its flat side down, even though it's a shorter focal distance. I'm not about to change my lens from flat side down, although I do accept that both ways are in fact correct. But what I will have to do now that I've seen this is adjust my setting piece from six millimeters down to probably four and a half millimeters. And it will mean that I can get the crispness back into the cuts on my card. And just as a final note, most of you guys will have two inch lenses. So you'll still be able to use this if you've got something like a three quarter inch setting piece, because all you need to do is to put your setting piece on the number three and set your nozzle to the correct distance, 19 millimeters on the number three. So this is 19 millimeters. This will be 18 millimetres, 17 millimetres, and so it'll run 19, 20, 21, 22. So you'll still be able to get a scale, just won't be these particular numbers. If you don't want to go to the trouble of designing this again for yourself, then I will be happy to supply you with the DXF file. All you've got to do is just message me on the, um, on the YouTube messaging system and request the file. Send me your email address and I'll send you the file. Well, thanks for watching again. Um, every time I thought I understand something, um, it turns out that there's uh, more knowledge to be gained and had. Who knows where we're going next? See you soon. Bye.